the possibility of becoming tasteless. In verse 13, the Lord said, But if the salt has become tasteless, with what shall it be salted? It is no longer good for anything but to be cast out and trampled under foot by men. For the kingdom people to become tasteless means that they have lost their sorting function. They have become the same as the earthly people. With nothing to distinguish them from unbelievers, to become tasteless is to lose the distinction between us and the worldly people. It is to become the same as the worldly ones. Being the same as the worldly people is the opposite of the nature revealed in verses three through twelve. It means that we are no longer poor in spirit, mourning for the negative situation, meek, hungry, and thirsty for righteousness, merciful, pure in seeking God. Making peace, willing to be persecuted for the sake of righteousness, and willing to be reproached for Christ, it means that we live, walk, and behave like the worldly people. If such is our case, we become tasteless, and the salt has lost its function. Lot's wife is an illustration of this. She became a pillar of salt, which indicates salt that has lost its function. When salt becomes a pillar, it cannot function, mainly because it has lost its taste. The fact that Lot's wife became a pillar of salt is a strong warning to us not to lose the distinction between us and the world. We should never lose our taste, but maintain the sorting function of killing germs, of eliminating rottenness, and of keeping things in their original condition, or of bringing them back to their God-created condition. Wherever the kingdom people are, they should exercise a sorting influence over those around them. In our neighborhoods, we must exercise our function of killing germs. But if we become the same as the worldly people, we lose our function and our taste. Because we have lost our taste, we no longer have the sorting ability, and we cannot fulfill our sorting function. If we have the nature of the kingdom people revealed in the nine blessings, we shall be truly salty. We shall be sought to our relatives and in-laws. If we are poor in spirit, mourning, meek, righteous, merciful, and pure in seeking God, we shall have a sorting function. There will be no need to rebuke others or to point out their mistakes and wrongdoings. They will be sorted simply by our presence. Sometimes certain evil ones will stay away from us because we are so salty. This is what it means to kill the germs of this rotten earth. The Lord's intention is to bring this earth back to its original condition. Although we cannot see this in the present age. We shall see it in the next age, when the millennial kingdom comes. The whole earth will be sorted, all the germs on this earth will be utterly killed, and the whole earth will be not only regained by Christ but also brought back to its God-created condition. This work will be done by the kingdom people. In verse thirteen, the king said that salt, which has lost its taste, will be cast out and trampled under foot by men. To be cast out is to be put away from the kingdom of the heavens. To be trampled under foot by men is to be treated as useless dust, being the light of the world, as a city upon a mountain. Verse fourteen says, "You are the light of the world." Light is the shining of the lamp to enlighten those in darkness. To the darkened world, the people of the kingdom of the heavens are such a light effacing its darkness. In nature, they are the heat yielding salt, and in behavior, they are the shining light. As the shining light, the kingdom people are like a city situated upon a mountain. Such a city cannot be hidden. This is ultimately consummated in the holy city of the New Jerusalem. For many years, I was troubled by the Lord's illustration of a city situated upon a mountain. Until I came into the church life, I could not understand how light could be illustrated by a builded city. After I was in the practical building of the church, I saw that. Only by being built together can the kingdom people be in a city situated on a mountain. This city becomes a shining light. 
In Anaheim, the saints are grouping together in their neighborhoods. And if this practice becomes prevailing, and the saints in these groups are built together, every group will be part of the shining city situated on a mountain top. In these three chapters, the Lord Jesus did not use the term church. However, the term kingdom used many times in these chapters actually refers to the church. The kingdom mentioned in Matthew 5, 6, and 7 is the aspect of the church concerned with discipline and exercise. The church is the aspect of grace and life for the kingdom, and the kingdom is the aspect of discipline and exercise for the church. Therefore, the Lord's word in these chapters regarding the kingdom refer, actually refers to the exercise and discipline in the church. As we have seen, many Christians understand these chapters in an individualistic way. Most have not seen that this constitution is not for individuals, but for a corporate people. We know that this decree is for a corporate people, because the light is not an individual person, but a builded city. This indicates that the kingdom people need the building. If the saints in the church in your locality are not built up, but are scattered, divided, and separated, there is no city there. And as long as there is no city, there is no light, because the light is the city. The light is not an individual believer. The light is a corporate city built up as one entity to shine over the people surrounding it. It is impossible to find such a thing in today's Christianity, but every local church in the lost recovery must be a builded city.